Now let's talk about the lateral wall of the nose. Now this is a very interesting part of the nose. Basically what happens in the lateral wall, it consists of three projections coming out of various bones. And what are these projections exactly called? They are called the conchas, all right? These are projection, shelf-like projections from bones. So this is the superior, this is the middle, and this is the inferior conchas. Because of these three shelf-like projections, there are three grooves that are being formed beneath each concha. It's literally like this. This is a projection, so beneath that projection, there will be this groove-like area. This will be known as the meatus, and then the next projection will come, and beneath that, another groove, and so on. So just like that, what we have is the beneath the superior concha, we have the superior meatus. Beneath the middle, we have the middle meatus, and then the inferior, we have the inferior meatus. The meatuses are grooves beneath the conchas. Now let's talk about how the lateral wall is formed, what bones or what is constituting the lateral wall. And once again, like all the others, this is also partly bony, partly cartilaginous. Let's talk about the bony part of this uh, lateral wall. So the bony part of the lateral wall is formed by many, many bones. It begins with this bone here called the nasal bone. And then comes the frontal process of the maxilla. So this is the maxilla, right? It sends a process towards the frontal bone. This is known as the frontal process of the maxilla. Behind that, this tiny bone is the lacrimal bone. And then we have this ethmoidal bones, labyrinth, all right? This is the labyrinth of the ethmoidal bone. It is this ethmoidal labyrinth that forms your superior concha and middle concha. These are those projections, all right? Then we have this inferior concha. Inferior concha is formed by spongy bone itself. Inferior concha is an independent concha. It's an independent bone. Then we have going posteriorly, you can see from the palatine bone, we have this perpendicular plate coming. It is the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. And behind that is the medial pterygoid plate. This is the bony part. The cartilaginous part is formed by these cartilage, the superior and inferior nasal cartilages. Then we have a tiny cuticular part, which is covered by fibro fatty tissue. So that is basic parts constituting the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. Now here you can see all those conchas, also known as turbinates, and beneath them the grooves, the meatuses. What's the point of these conchas and meatuses? Like why are we learning these? They're such complicated names. Well, we are because we need to know what openings lie within all of these, all right? So I'm just going to uh, quote some important parts in the lateral wall that I want you to focus on. And the most part of your lateral wall is known as the vestibule. So this is the vestibule, all right? Behind that is the middle part. This middle part consists of the, is known as the atrium, all right? It is the atrium of the lateral wall. And then the posterior part of this entire lateral wall is consisting of the conchas, all right? The superior and middle are formed by the ethmoidal bone and the inferior is an independent bone. So let's find out what openings lie within this lateral wall posterior part. All right. So basically the openings lie in the meatuses. And there is another place where the opening is lying. This area right here above the superior concha, which is known as the sphenoethmoidal recess. All right. Because you can see it's the sphenoid bone and the ethmoid bone. Beneath that, there is sphenoethmoidal recess. Firstly, over here is the opening of the sphenoid air sinus. All right. So this is the air sinus within the sphenoid bone. Now, beneath the superior concha is the superior meatus. Within the superior meatus lies the opening of posterior ethmoidal air sinus. Then we have the middle meatus. In the middle meatus, almost all openings lie. So what I want you to do is first draw this rounded projection. This is known as the ethmoidal bulla. In the ethmoidal bulla, in the upper margin of it, there is the opening of the middle ethmoidal air sinus. Now what I want you to do is draw the sulcus known as the hiatus semilunaris lying just below the ethmoidal bulla. So below the ethmoidal bulla, we've drawn this semicircular thing called the hiatus semilunaris. Within the hiatus semilunaris, the uppermost part or the anteriormost part, this area is known as the infundibulum. And in the infundibulum lies the opening of the frontal air sinus. All right. Going below the infundibulum, we have the opening of the anterior ethmoidal air sinus. And then most posteriorly lies your opening of maxillary air sinus. Inferior meatus, this area is the inferior meatus. Over here lies a very important opening of the nasolacrimal duct. And it is guarded by this valve known as the Hasner's valve. So now I'd like to point out some important points. Do not forget them. First thing, superior concha is the smallest of all conchas. 
inferior concha is the independent of all conchas because it is not formed by any bone it does not need the ethmoid bone it has its own source of making its body part and the third point i want to remember inferior meatus is the largest meatus of all the meatuses let's move on and talk about the arterial supply of the lateral wall now one thing i told you guys always divide into four quadrants anterior inferior anterior superior posterior inferior and posterior superior now what did i tell you what to do next is always in the anterior superior quadrant i want you to write down anterior ethmoidal so the anterior ethmoidal will supply your anterior superior quadrant of lateral nasal wall it will also be assisted by the posterior ethmoidal artery the anterior inferior quadrant will be supplied by branches from the facial artery Posterior superior quadrant will be supplied by the sphenopalatine artery. Posterior inferior quadrant will be supplied by branches from the greater palatine artery. It's almost the same as the nasal septum arterial supply. The only thing we did was put a facial rather than the superior label. Otherwise, they're almost the same. The venous supply, the anterior part is going to drain in the facial vein. The middle part will drain into the pterygoid venous plexus and the posterior part drains into the pharyngeal plexus of vein. What about the nerve supply? Antero superiorly once again anterior ethmoidal nerve. Antero inferiorly is going to be a nerve called the anterior superior alveolar nerve. Postero superior quadrant will be supplied by branches from the pterygopalatine ganglion and what are these branches called? These are going to be what is this? this is the lateral wall? This is the area what? Superior area and the posterior area. So just combine the lateral, posterior, superior nasal branches of the pterygopalatine ganglion. Posterior inferior quadrant is also going to be supplied by the pterygopalatine ganglion's anterior palatine branch. Apart from that, special nerve supply is the olfactory nerves that are in the upper part of this area. Lymphatic drainage anteriorly goes into submandibular, posteriorly the retropharyngeal and deep cervical lymph nodes similar to the nasal septum. And with that, we've reached the end of our topic of nose. I really hope I made it easy for you. For more easy anatomy videos, do not forget to subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for watching. Until next time.